international accounting standards and international financial reporting standards. The Sri Lankan Institute of Chartered Accountants, uh, which is the body which is associated with the setting of these standards, and the local uh, regulators have committed to dates. It's only six months away that the first set of IFRS compliant financials would be established. So therefore, the accounting community needs to understand them well. And those who have a good understanding will be that much more well equipped for employment and will be, uh, there'll be so many avenues opening out. We all know that already the larger listed companies have done what they call uh, a gap analysis to see to what extent what they are doing now is different to what the requirements of IFRS are so that they know the impact and implications of it and the effect of it on their financial statements. Uh, but there are a large number of other medium-sized companies which also come under regulations of the uh, accounting standards monitoring board which are called specialized business enterprises. Uh, you, I'm sure you have heard of it. If not, keep it in mind. Now, these companies are also required to follow international financial reporting standards. We'll, of course, call them Sri Lanka financial reporting standards, but they are compliant. So there is a lot of opportunity. The point I'm trying to make here is this is now a reality. It is on ground. And sharpening your skills in this area will make you competitive to secure a job. So it's worth your while. Although your core is management accounting, I'm sure you have done a, a good courses in financial accounting and financial reporting. Strengthen that area. There's plenty of courses being offered. I'm sure on, online, uh, or every day if you look at the papers, various institutions are offering courses. Sharpen that skill and be ready to take opportunities available in the market. Secondly, uh, this was referred to by, I think, Professor Fonseca as well. There is uh, challenges taking place in the global economy. The EU countries are not doing well. You must be reading of these in the newspapers frequently. The UK economy isn't doing great. There's uh, unemployment. There's many heavy fiscal controls that have been brought in. The US has its very high debt levels and their own series of problems. Now, these are our markets. Our employers whom you'll be working for, who are exporters in, you know that exports are extremely important to economies like ours. And therefore, uh, you'll find a large number of companies in the export industries, and many of you might end up working in these. The competition they face will continue to be very acute, because there are other countries like China, even in our South Asian area, India, Bangladesh, and so on, and many countries competing in the same items that we are exporting. And every order, next, every subsequent order, there's price pressure. So if we are to get these continuing orders into our businesses, we will need to compete on price. So therefore, then the key competitive advantage is efficiency of running those businesses in a cost-effective manner. And to do this, the core strengths that, that you have learned in management accounting will keep you in good stead. So in other words, you can support these organizations by making sure that there are very good systems of inventory control and management, process efficiency, input-output control, the materials you use versus the materials, the final output, make sure there's no wastage, cost management, make sure you purchase your items at the right price, uh, right quality, and use them efficiently. Of course, quality control measures, budgeting and variance analysis, to name a few, will be critical to making these businesses competitive. And you have that knowledge, and you can make a change and make a difference in these companies. So make sure that you keep that knowledge sharp, and make sure that you use that knowledge when you work. The third significant change that I see happening in uh, the current context and likely over the next few years, is the impact of information communication technology. The uh, manual and semi-manual systems of accounting that our generation was used to, which had a lot of paper trail, controls were there extensively in more or less paper-based form, or you could check these ar around the computer. There was always computer paper interfaces in the systems and processes. With communications technology advancing, there's interconnections between suppliers, 
buyers and the organization. So from your, those who are supplying, te technologically documentation comes into your system and from your system uh, it moves within department from your ordering to processing to invoicing and then to the customer. So you don't see that much of paper trail. So as a result of this, our mindsets have to change and we need to get more conversant with how these ERP systems operate. Uh, this is a bit more difficult than the previous two and we must ensure that we become conversant with these. I mean, oh, not, I'm not telling you to do it right now immediately, but have this in the back of your minds uh, so that we are equipped to make sure that fraud and error does not take place unnoticed to accountants. So this is a, a big challenge to the accounting profession as we go forward. Now, alongside all these developments, which I previously spoke of, all of us have heard of the multiplicity of corporate frauds that shocked the investor communities over the last decade. Starting with Enron in 2001, WorldCom in 2002, Parmalat in 2003, made of investment securities later on in 2008, Satyam Computers close to home in India in 2009, and Lehman Brothers in 2010, just to mention a few big names that were heard of and much publicity was given to, brought focus and attention. These frauds brought focus and attention on the governance of businesses. How come these large businesses, which respected boards of directors, with competent accounting firms working as their auditors and qualified accountants working within these companies, still succumb to these fraud, some of them fairly basic and continue for many years. As a consequence of this, there has been pressure for uniform, universal high standards of pro high professional standards and one of the reasons for international financial reporting standards getting pushed so quickly and so widely across the globe was this. Then there's tighter regulation, bodies like the, our own accounting standards monitoring board, uh, the US PCOB and similar uh, regulatory bodies. So there's a lot of regulation been brought in. There's argument that there's too much regulation. You would have read the press debate right now about the Securities Exchange Commission and the Stock Exchange. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that here today, but what extent of regulation? But there is inevitably going to be tighter regulation as a result. And there's a need for high standards to be applicable. There's a sharper focus on ethical conduct. Uh, previous speakers mentioned this, there's a need and a review of top management compensation, which sometimes brings about short-termism. So if, while there is an argument that is good to have compensation for senior management, which is uh, aligned to performance, if they are also involved in preparation and presentation of financial results, based on which they are, uh, a good part of their compensation is determined, there is a motivation change these to suit that. And that is where independence of the auditors, uh, independent directors on board and so on become so important. So what does this mean? There will be an increase in developments of corporate governance. We are seeing that happen today to ensure better accountability, transparency and corporate social responsibility. We as professionals must learn lessons from these scandals, keep an eye open, and make sure that in the organizations we work, that we don't get caught up and become part of these. The fifth and final trend which I will speak about is sustainability reporting. Sustainable development. These are something is just a catchphrase, greening, sustainable development. You're always hearing this uh, and it's being used sometimes as a marketing gimmick, but it's not a marketing gimmick. The worry is the generation today, what is our responsibility to see that we have a, a, a planet which continues with the same level of resources uh, for the generations to come. So we don't want businesses to destroy these, uh, uh, or pollute and destroy the environment in which communities, societies will continue to live, work and, uh, you know, uh, sustain over the, over the decades, centuries maybe. So in this context, corporate social responsibility becoming important and becoming a part of many professions, including ours. 
society and users of financial statements are expecting more than just economic performance to be reported. They're expecting the impact of the company's business on the environment, on social implications to also be presented for them to make a decision on whether they want to do business with these companies, invest in these companies. So there is a growing trend on sustainability and sustainability reporting. There's expectation that financial statements, annual reports will contain what companies are doing in respect of this aspect. So we must also equip ourselves, at least understand what it's all about. I'm sure you have heard of triple, triple bottom line and triple bottom line based reporting. So this is one of the areas which comes through on the sustainability front. So these two, ladies and gentlemen, would be a pivotal opportunity for all of you as you progress into your careers. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, in conclusion, may I say that these are very interesting, vibrant and challenging times for the profession. The profession is growing and changing like it has never done before. Uh, and you are in the midst of it, in the prime of your careers. So gear yourself, take, make avail of these opportunities, uphold the values that our profession has always stood for, and be a part of this esteemed profession. Congratulations and all the very best to all of you. Thank you. CMA Sri Lanka 9th Graduation Ceremony 2012. We begin with the award of certificates. Now, I invite Professor Mangala Fonseca, our guest of honor, to the stage to hand over the certificates. Foundation level, May 2012 examination, Ms. RGDS Kumari. Ms. K.G. Panditharatna. Ms. E.M.C.P. Ekanayaka. Mr. K.M.S. Deshat Priya. Ms. K.P.P. Madhushani. Mr. N. Kanagaraja. Ms. MTP Fernando. Ms. MTP Ferdinando. Mr. W. M. T. T. B. Vijayaratna. Ms. W. T. S. Somavira. Mr. N. M. Shoaib. Ms. W. D. N. Dilhani. Mr. S. R. S. Farzan. Mr. D. D. R. Pereira. Ms. I. G. Kivitiagala. Ms. A. M. R. Madhushani. Ms. W. D. N. L. Visidagam. Mr. D. G. R. Sampath. Ms. C. K. Waduge. Ms. B. C. G. Kure. Mr. T. D. Kande Arachi. Ms. S. M. Amar Singha. Mr. D. D. A. R. K. Gunaratna. Ms. D. H. Nandadeva. Ms. S. U. Niroshani. Mr. W. M. D. Lakshan. 
Ms. L. M. N. D. Lans Lansakara. Mr. O. T. Darshana. Mr. M. K. G. J. P. Gunatalek Tilaka. Mr. C. R. Devage. Mr. M. D. A. A. Valavage. Ms. S. M. Gamage. Mr. S. P. L. Karyavasam. Mr. W. Mr. P. W. A. L. Pereira. Mr. A. H. M. Pereira. Mr. L. A. T. Dilshan. Ms. W. B. S. M. Pereira. Ms. K. S. G. Vanti. Mr. M. N. P. Pereira. Ms. A. M. N. S. Atapattu. Ms. S. M. N. J. K. Samarakun. Ms. W. K. C. U. Eran Dani. Ms. M. H. S. Panditage. Ms. R. J. K. L. L. Jaisekara. Ms. M. B. S. R. Fernando. Ms. M. M. T. N. Dias. Mr. U. S. Disanayaka. Mr. T. H. C. Medavia. Ms. J. A. C. Jivanti. Ms. P. R. C. S. Bandara. Ms. S. P. Kumara Peruma. Mr. M. N. M. Azar. Ms. W. R. M. B. A. K. Vikramasinghe. Ms. M. D. O. S. Mendis. Now, intermediate stage, September 2000 level examination. Mr. S. Mohanavaratan. Ms. E. H. Gurusinghe. Mr. J. K. Dilshan Silva. Ms. B. S. Baddegama. Ms. S. Suganya. Ms. F. J. Felicia. Mr. M. M. B. Anwar. Mr. W. H. N. S. Randenia. Ms. K. G. Vanya. Mr. M. D. A. Pradeep. Mr. Nilanta Pereira. Mr. K. V. D. M. Priyanga. Ms. A. P. Ruanti. Ms. S. P. Surya Peruma. Ms. R. Karunya. Ms. T. K. Aparakka. Ms. U. A. D. P. P. S. Udabatta. Ms. K. D. S. D. Saratsiri. Mr. R. Ramanayaka. Mr. S. R. Ramanayaka. Ms. E. D. D. Vijay Tilaka. Ms. 
ETS Vijay Tilakam. Ms. GVT Sandamala. Ms. MBAM Disanayaka. Ms. SS Vatyarachi. Ms. PKBI Dirukshi. Ms. GN Karuna Tunga. Ms. RF Ralia. Ms. GWNE Karuna Ratna. Ms. DDKL Jaisingha. Ms. RY Nana Kar. Mr. JAN Jaivira. Mr. MSPP Fernando. Ms. JADSC Dias. Mr. S. Mr. H. J. M. Fonseca. Mr. P. N. I. C. Patirana. Mr. W. K. A. C. R. Shamika. Mr. P. D. S. A. N. Lanka Tilaka. Mr. N. M. S. S. Jayatilaka. Ms. P. H. H. Madhushika. Ms. L. A. S. Nisansala. Ms. M. A. J. A. Siddhika. Ms. K. Anugrai. Mr. J. M. Bizrul Hafi. Ms. M. A. S. Mal Kakula. Ms. J. Induja. Ms. Mr. T. G. A. H. Lekamge. Ms. N. Sintuja. Ms. J. Subramaniam. That's the operation level May 2004 exam, examination. Mr. W. P. L. Dimel. Mr. D M. F. Mohamadu. Ms. A. A. Amar Singha. Mr. S. A. D. D. Prasanna. Mr. S. M. D. T. Ruksh Rukshana. Ms. C. N. Virakodi. Mr. B. M. Ranasinghe. Ms. K. B. M. M. Somasinghe. Mr. M. A. I. A. Daranagama. Ms. J. C. Aloka. Ms. M. N. Sagaya. Ms. M. P. D. U. Bandara. Mr. F. M. Ishak. Ms. G. V. S. N. De Silva. Mr. S. H. N. Gamake. Mr. K. B. A. Sean. Ms. Is Z. A. F. Nivruza. Ms. W. M. M. Priyadarshini. Ms. F. S. Roshanali. 
Miss NN Wanigatunga, Mr. AHLCS Atapatu. Thank you, Professor Mangala Fonseca. Now I invite our chief guest, Mr. Asita Thalwata, to the stage to hand over certificates. Professional sta uh, one stage, stage one, September 2011 examination. Mr. T.K. Kutilan. Ms. B.N.S. Pereira. Mr. E.D.A. Sanjeeva. Ms. K.A.D. Madhuanti. Ms. D.U.E. Jayasuriya. Ms. D.A. Jayatilaka. Mr. D. B. L. Malavarachi. Mr. P. C. D. Fernando. Ms. M. N. F. Zarina. Mr. M. L. A. P. W. Jayavadana. Ms. A. L. P. Sarachandra. Ms. TMCH Udagama. Ms. DVI Mihirani. Mr. S. Kajen Tiran. Mr. SSS Wazim. Ms. JJ Dasanayaka. Mr. K. G. C. P. Virakon. Mr. K. M. S. M. Rizwan. Ms. R. M. B. N. Varaguna. Ms. K. G. P. Chandani. Mr. E. A. K. S. Madhushankar. Mr. M. A. Satar. Ms. K. G. A. C. Kumudu. Mr. D. N. M. Rajapatiran. Mr. G. C. Jaisin. Mr. L. R. N. B. Gunasekara. Managerial level, May 2012 examination. Mr. M. N. Khalid. Ms. P. M. B. Y. Jayatilaka. Ms. G. R. Marjan. Mr. A. R. M. Rishat. Ms. M. S. H. Pereira. Ms. S. C. Sumali. Mr. U. P. L. C. Madhushan. Mr. M. A. P. Priyankara. Ms. N. N. Liyanagamage. Ms. M. Renuka. Strategic level, May 2012 examination. Ms. K. P. C. M. U. De Silva. Mr. A. A. D. C. Pereira. Mr. R. A. K. D. Rupasinha. Ms. K. Krishna Kanta. Mr. K. R. M. Fazli. 
Miss FFA Carter. Mr. ABA Masim. Miss KANP Ratasekara. Mr. MHK Varnabe. Miss GN Hassan. Mr. N. Vasantan. Miss N. Nitya. Professional Stage 2, September 2011 examination, Miss A.H.M.P.P. Abiratna, Miss S.D.P. Fernando, Mr. H.P.G.N. Patirana, Miss G.A.Y.C. Vijay Kohn, Miss A.M. Shiraz. Mr. G.G.C.R. Gamagain. 